Albany movement begins in the middle of 1961. The people of the city of Albany, like many Americans throughout the South, have grown increasingly impatient with segregation, increasingly impatient with the pace of change. Particularly in Albany, the young people were inspired by the changes that had been occurring throughout the South. Specific examples of those changes would be the Nashville movement, where students desegregated lunchroom counters. The fact that in other southern cities, change was occurring galvanized and mobilized blacks and whites in and around Albany, Georgia, to do something about their city. And what made the Albany movement so bold and so unique was that the activists in Albany decided that they were not going to undertake to desegregate one institution or one facility at a time. They were going to try to desegregate everything at once. Led by SNCC, they would have public marches to protest segregation. They knew that those public marches would attract news reporters with cameras who would film their actions as well as write about their actions. They invited Dr. King to come down because of his national and really international visibility. They understood that if Dr. King marched with them, if Dr. King went to jail with them, then they would take the Albany movement to an entirely different level. They would engage a wider national and international audience. So Dr. King did come and he did participate in the Albany movement. Their long-term goal was obviously to desegregate everything. Their short-term goal was during these protests, during these sit-ins, to have confrontations with police officers. They wanted policemen to get a little violent with them. They wanted to show the hostility, the aggression of the local police and of segregationists. And they wanted to show how it was very powerful to return that kind of violence with nonviolence. What they didn't expect was a police force that had studied their tactics, that had studied the writings of Dr. King, that had studied the writings of Mohandas Gandhi. Led by police officer Lori Pritchett, the police tried to be very dignified and respectful to the activists in front of the cameras so that the confrontations that were filmed and photographed lack the drama of the confrontations that we see in places like Birmingham and in places like Montgomery. Dr. King came and went several times during the Albany Movement, which lasted between 1961 and 1962. Ultimately, much of Albany was desegregated. Nevertheless, many insiders as well as historians of the Civil Rights Movement feel that the Albany movement was a failure because there was no dramatic moment when all of the walls fell, so to speak, and all of the rules changed. The rules about Jim Crow changed gradually, and some of them well after Dr. King had moved on to Birmingham, well after the years of 1961 to 62. But the conclusion one can draw from the Albany movement is that as far as the local citizens of Albany who were involved in the movement action are concerned, that movement was a success. A success because it gave individuals in Albany, many of whom had experienced in their families generations of Jim Crow, the understanding that they could, as individuals, change their communities. It gave, the Albany movement gave local people a sense of voice and visibility that many of them had never had before.